So it's a little hard to read, but yeah. So so this is all some some real data. Okay, the, all the points are real data. So this is um, normalized porosity versus normalized permeability. So normalized being uh, the porosity divided by the initial porosity, the permeability divided by, you know, the current per permeability divided by the initial permeability, the current porosity divided by the initial porosity, so that we can plot a whole bunch of data on one plot. It shows that basically all materials fall within, you know, some range that's well described by the Kazuni Karman relationship. Uh, this one is, is, I think, what they call a modified kazuni karman relationship because, um, so if you can't see that equation, it's kind of small, but, you know, it's the, the permeability is equal to some ge geometry factor B uh, times the current porosity minus the percolation porosity cubed times the characteristic grain size squared over one plus percolation porosity minus. So the percolation porosity is like the sort of the, the minimum porosity at which fluid will move at all. So anyway, um, and then you know, then this is just a relationship. If you, if you, if you use the, the normalized permeability, so you just divide by the initial permeability, then the geometry and the, the grain size factors drop out, and you, and you get this, this equation. But the idea here is that for a wide range of materials, they all fall in this range that is somewhat well described by Kozini Karman. So I think that's just, uh, those are just the two equations that were on the previous slide. And then, you know, if you include this factor gamma for a grain size reduction, then you can rewrite this relationship in terms of gamma. That's all that says. And, and so, This is for a Gulf of, Gulf of Mexico Field Z. So right, you, you realize these, these names are just, you know, some company was nice enough to provide the data, but they didn't want the exact name of the field in the book, right? So there's a lot of Gulf of Mexico Field X, Field Z. But yeah, so, so with that, right, we have some way of, of relating now the, the depletion in the reservoir to the porosity change via the mechanical models. Essentially, in this case, the cam clay model combined with more Coulomb, right? So a cam clay cap model combined with more Coulomb failure model or plasticity model. Uh, then, so then from there, we can, so now we know how the porosity is going to change. And then from there, combined with Kozini Karman, we know how the permeability is going to change with, this, with depletion. And this is two lines for the upper and lower bounds uh, of the kozini karman relationship, and then you get sort of all the data in this field for these wells uh, falls in the range, okay? And so the reason this is important <coughs> is if you just look at an I idealized reservoir, so this is just uh, sort of a made up reservoir uh, single phase flow, they're going to run for like, I don't know, I can't remember, I, mean, I guess over 8,000 days, but I remember the they were going to run this, the reservoir until it had a bottom hole pressure of uh, 1,000 PSI. So essentially, they produce at a constant injection rate, monitor the pressure, and when it reaches 1,000 PSI, they shut it in the well. Okay? So, 
if you these are cumulative production curve versus time, obviously. And if you just use a constant compressibility model, then this is all you predict. Okay. If you use a compaction drive model, which essentially models the porosity change due to deformation, but no permeability change, then you get this curve. Right? And so in both cases, they don't, you know, before the 8,000 days, when they shut off the simulation, they shut in the well, and that's the maximum cumulative production you're going to get. Uh, okay. But if you if you actually incorporate the commu the uh, porosity change, then you know this, the <coughs> the well is still producing. So this is the upper bound, and this is the lower bound. So in this case, the well is still producing at the 8,000 day mark. And you know if we ran it out further, I think you'd see that the total cumulative production would surpass the other two. And, and you know it's it's it has to do with so you actually get longer production out of the well because you know, the current porosity is being restricted as and the permeability is therefore influenced over time. So <clears throat> I thought you guys would have more questions about the test, so that's all I have for today. <laughs>